It's remarkable that a nation with such a small population like Sweden can maintain the kind of robust fighter aircraft program it has. Over the years, Sweden has made consistent advancements in its Air Force technology, resulting in the development of a formidable and nearly indestructible fighter jet. This creation has left other global powers astonished, with even Russia opting to steer clear of confrontations. While this invention is not a sixth-generation jet, its capabilities exceed many people's expectations. The fourth-generation Saab Gripen is so captivating that some even claim it defies the laws of physics. Well, they're not very far from the truth. Join us as we explore the immense power and capabilities of this new Swedish fighter jet, the Saab JS-39. Gripen E is the epitome of operational efficiency meeting stringent requirements for flight safety, availability, agility, training, and life cycle costs. It's a reliable frontline fighter that can take on various roles, whether operating independently or as part of a broader defense network. It's a high-performance fighter with predictable life cycle costs, thanks to cutting-edge technology, modern materials, integrated computer systems, and advanced aerodynamics. This jet is not exactly new, as it belongs to the fourth generation plus category and entered production in 2013. But the fact that it competes with newer generation fighters makes it incredibly remarkable. During the time of its creation, the F-22, the world's first fifth generation fighter, had been soaring for a while. Also, the F-35, another fifth generation marvel, was on the horizon. Meanwhile, the Russians were flaunting their Su-35, classified as a fourth Gen++ aircraft, boasting controlled thrust vectoring for incredible maneuverability. Matt Togeson, commander of the Swedish Air Force, confidently stated that Saab's Gripen E could take down Russian Su series aircraft. Ukrainian Defense Minister Reznikov unexpectedly chimed in, claiming the Swedish Gripen was even superior to the F-16 in countering Russian aggression. It's crucial to understand that Sweden and France are among the only European countries capable of independently developing fourth-generation fighters. Sweden, a relatively small nation with a population of just 10.5 million, couldn't break the bank on this project. Furthermore, its landscape, dominated by forests, lakes, and rivers, offered limited space for airfields, which could easily be destroyed in times of conflict. Hence, Sweden needed a cost-effective aircraft that could take off and land on regular highways. That was when the JS-39 Gripen A, the first fighter variant, was created in 1988. When the Gripen A was created, it showcased impressive capabilities that made it a notable addition to the world of fighter aircraft. Its airframe incorporated a significant proportion of composite materials, reducing its weight while enhancing its radar stealth characteristics. Regarding firepower, the fighter is armed with a 27mm Mauser BK-27 revolver cannon, carrying 120 rounds in the single-seat version. Furthermore, it features eight weapons mounting points, with two located under the fuselage and another two under each wingtip. This arsenal provides the Gripen with various armament choices, including missiles and laser-guided bombs. But that was not enough. Over the years, Gripen A underwent a successful modernization process, bolstering its strengths and ironing out its weaknesses. Now, the newest variant, Gripen E, is a single-engine monoplane with a straightforward delta-shaped wing and a fully adjustable floating leading edge. It employs a duck aerodynamic configuration, positioning horizontal rudders in front of the wing. The aircraft intentionally embraces aerodynamic instability, allowing for high maneuverability. It's equipped with a fly-by-wire electronic control system that boasts a three-channel redundancy system for safety. Additionally, there's an analog backup control system for emergencies. Impressively, the Gripen can take off and land on short runways, needing only 190 meters, making regular roads suitable as makeshift airfields. About 30% of its airframe is constructed from composite materials, reducing weight and radar visibility, although it's not a stealth aircraft. Its key components, like the horizontal wing control surfaces and four fins, are made of carbon fiber, while the fuselage is aluminum alloy and the wings are titanium alloy. The Gripen E boasts a powerful American-made F414 engine, generating about six tons of thrust in afterburner mode. 
Its cruising speed in idle mode exceeds the speed of sound, hitting 1.1 Mach, and with the afterburner engaged, it reaches Mach 2. It also features a NATO standard refueling system, emphasizing ease of repair and maintenance. The downtime between sorties for refueling, reloading weapons, and routine maintenance doesn't exceed 10 minutes, and the engine can be replaced within an hour if needed. What sets the Gripen E apart is its extensive network capabilities, typically found in fifth generation fighters. It features the Gripen Data Link System, Link 16 System, and National Data Link Secure System. These multi frequency communication systems provide pilots with complete situational awareness and facilitate two way communication with other Gripen fighters, various aircraft, and ground combat equipment. Its active electronically scanned array, AESA, radar system is a standout, allowing simultaneous tracking of multiple targets, not just in the frontal aspect, but also on the sides and rear. And, furthermore, it boasts an electronic optical detection system called Skyward G, operating in the thermal range. This enables passive targeting using radar to minimize visibility, a feature only seen in the Russian Su-35, Su-57, and the American F-35. The Gripen E also incorporates a radar warning receiver and missile approach warning systems to alert the pilot to radar lock and incoming missiles. One of its trump cards is the electronic warfare system. During an exercise, the Gripen E discreetly approached a German Typhoon fighter thanks to its electronic warfare system's interference with the Typhoon's sensors. It wouldn't land on an enemy wing in real combat, but rather engage at close range with missiles. The Gripen fighter often flies under the radar, so to speak, and is frequently underestimated in terms of its capabilities. During the Libyan campaign, it was initially seen as a tactical asset, but quickly proved its worth as a strategic resource. What's remarkable is that no mission involving the Gripen had to be cancelled due to technical issues. Another strength of the fighter is in the incorporation of artificial intelligence into its control system. Paired with the widescreen display, this tech combo significantly aids pilots during their decision-making processes and operational tasks. Artificial intelligence serves up information in a pilot-friendly format, making it a breeze for them to select, aim, and launch weapons while coordinating seamlessly with other members of the tactical air unit. In essence, if the AI determines that one missile can take out a specific target, one aircraft from the unit will engage it while the others focus on different targets. This ensures efficient use of resources and firepower. Creating a powerful aircraft like this in 2013 is such a marvel. However, recognizing that software quickly becomes outdated, especially in aircraft, the Swedes devised a clever solution. They separated the software necessary to run various systems from the flight-critical software. This allows for easy updates to the necessary software without the need for costly recertification. Imagine updating the software on the aircraft as effortlessly as you would on your smartphone. That's the level of simplicity we're talking about here. This approach significantly reduces the aircraft's operating costs over its lifetime. It also enables countries operating the Gripen E to customize their avionics to meet their specific needs. The Gripen E's primary weapons include the MBDA Meteor Long Range and Iris T Short Range missiles. The Meteor missile boasts a ramjet engine, hitting speeds of Mach 4 and having a range of over 100 kilometers. What's more, it uses a more advanced version of the Meteor with a two way communication channel compared to the French Rafale. On the other hand, the Iris T missile, thanks to its sensitive seeker and maneuvering capabilities, can intercept small targets, including enemy-launched anti-aircraft missiles and air-to-air -air missiles. In terms of performance, the Gripen E has a maximum takeoff weight of 16.5 tons, and its combat range extends to 1,300 kilometers, notably more than the F-35. Moreover, its low maintenance requirements per flight hour ensure that the Gripen E spends less time grounded and more time in the air. For comparison, its predecessor, the Gripen JS-39A, had maintenance costs that were only half as much as its closest competitor, the single-engine F-16. Now, you might wonder if you need stealth and super maneuverability in a regional conflict. Well, the recent events in Ukraine shed some light on this. 
Russian planes, including the formidable Su-57, were hesitant to enter their operational zones despite Ukrainian air defense systems suffering damage. Close dogfights between Ukrainian and Russian fighters were notably absent. Instead, long-range missiles did most of the work. This tactic reflects Russia's risk-averse strategy. They aim to safeguard the advanced Su-57 technology from potential compromise within the Ukrainian theater. One of the critical fears driving this caution is the risk of losing a Su-57 and allowing NATO allies to study its wreckage, especially its innovative radar system. Russia is keen to avoid reputational damage, technology compromise, and reduced export prospects. The stakes are high, forcing Russia to tread carefully and avoid the adverse consequences a single crash could bring, including reputational harm and the vulnerability of sensitive technology. They're being this cautious, since the Russian Ministry of Defense claims the Su-57 is the most advanced fifth-generation stealth fighter, capable of outmatching any radar and taking down 10 American F-22 Raptors with a single missile. Amid the ongoing conflict, it remains a phantom lurking in the shadows, a weapon of untold power yet untapped potential. Despite Russia's exhibitions showcasing these advanced fighters, they have not been observed engaging in air aggression against Ukraine. Instead, Russia relies on other formidable aircraft and helicopters like the Su-30SM, Su-35, Su-34, Su-25, and K-52, frequently deployed on the front lines. It's worth noting that global air forces prioritize new technologies that ensure early detection and successful engagement with the enemy rather than relying solely on impressive airshow performances. Furthermore, Russia may be concerned about potential damage to the reputation of its air force if the advanced Su-57S were to face setbacks in Ukraine. The Su-57 Felon, considered Russia's most advanced fifth-generation stealth combat jet, boasts advanced avionics. However, it faced challenges and funding difficulties following the collapse of the Soviet Union. Though Russia still claims that the Su-57 was involved in combat operations in Syria, they lack concrete evidence. Given the importance of external buyers in funding Russia's weapons development amid international sanctions, the assertion may have been aimed at attracting foreign investors. Additionally, the Su-57 falls short of being a true fifth-generation fighter in several aspects. It has limited data link capabilities and efforts are underway to improve communication with drones. The Su-57's superior maneuverability suggests its recognition of its aircraft's limitations in long-range engagements compared to American counterparts, deviating from the true stealth aircraft concept. Overall, the absence of the Su-57 in Ukraine can be attributed to two key factors, a shortage of fighters and doubts about its capabilities. Due to Western sanctions, Russia lacks an adequate number of Su-57S, and they aim to avoid the embarrassment of losing one to Ukrainian forces. The volatile threat environment and potential backlash discourage them from deploying the Su-57 in Ukraine. Despite Russia's claims, Western observers have expressed doubts about the Su-57's true stealth capabilities. They've highlighted challenges Russian engineers face in achieving tight panel joins and incorporating non-stealthy engine features, resulting in a less stealthy body than American counterparts. If it engages the Swedish Gripen E, it may not survive it. However, it's crucial to note that the Gripen, while impressive, is not invincible. The F-15, for instance, can effectively keep its distance from a Gripen, engaging it beyond visual range if it can evade meteors. Yet, engaging in such a matchup is not necessarily the wisest strategy. The fighter jet is more or less on par with the F-35. The key difference is that the Gripen E doesn't rely on stealth technology, even though its radar cross-section is lower than most fighters, except the F-35 and F-22, and possibly, though not confirmed, the Russian and Chinese stealth aircraft. There are still some other differences between the Gripen E and F-35, though. Maneuverability is another distinguishing factor. The Gripen E is renowned for its agility and maneuverability making it particularly adept in dogfights and close combat situations. This focus on maneuverability is a notable strength. The F-35 has the upper hand regarding payload capacity as it can carry more weapons and equipment. This versatility allows it to excel in various mission types. 
The Gripen E boasts a longer combat range than the F-35 when considering range and endurance. This extended range can be advantageous for specific mission profiles. Customization is another area where the two fighters differ. The Gripen E offers more flexibility for customization, allowing countries that operate it to adapt their avionics to suit their unique requirements. This customization feature can be invaluable for nations with specific operational needs. Being able to compare a fourth-generation jet to a fifth-generation jet like this is no easy feat, and it's thanks to Swedish engineering expertise. If you're wondering how they became so good, the Swedish Air Force traces its roots back to July 1, 1926, when it was formed by merging the aircraft units of the Army and Navy. As the international tensions of the 1930s escalated, the Air Force underwent reorganization and growth, expanding from four to seven squadrons. When World War II erupted in 1939, the need for further expansion became evident, and this expansion continued throughout the war. Despite Sweden's neutrality, a robust air force was deemed essential to deter potential invasion and counter military threats from major powers. After World War II in 1945, the Swedish Air Force underwent a swift modernization. The days of equipping it with second-rate aircraft were over. Instead, the air staff made a strategic shift, procuring top-notch planes from abroad, like the P-51D Mustangs, de Havilland Mosquito NF, 19 Night Fighters, and de Havilland Vampires. Simultaneously, they actively supported the development of high-performance domestic aircraft. A pivotal moment arrived in the early 1950s with the introduction of the Saab 29 Tunnen fighter. Suddenly, Sweden possessed aircraft that could rival the best of the Royal Air Force, the Soviet Union's VVS, and the U.S. Air Force. During this period, a unique concept was put into action, the construction of road bases inspired by Germany's approach. Under the Base 60 Distributed Airfield Scheme, these bases were essentially ordinary highways designed to double as landing strips. Fast forward to the early 1980s and road number 44 was transformed into a site featuring four short runways, each measuring 17 by 800 meters. Numerous turnaround sites for rearming and refueling along this road were strategically placed. These short runways continue to serve their purpose, facilitating training exercises and takeoff and landing operations for aircraft like the Gripen and Hercules, especially for preparation in adverse conditions and international operations. So, basically, the Cold War era saw significant investments in the Swedish Air Force and domestic aircraft production, even diverting funds initially allocated for Swedish nuclear weapons. By 1957, Sweden boasted the world's fourth most formidable air force, with approximately 1,000 modern planes actively serving in the front line. This was because, throughout the 1950s, they introduced a series of impressive fighters into their arsenal, including the Saab J-29 Tunnen, Saab A-32 Lansen, and Saab J-5 Draken. These aircraft were pivotal in bolstering Sweden's air capabilities during this period of heightened global tension. The Saab J-29 marked Sweden's foray into turbojet-powered combat aircraft, following the Saab 21R. This versatile aircraft seamlessly served in fighter and fighter-bomber roles well into the 1970s. Initially designed with a predominantly straight wing, the story took an intriguing turn when Swedish engineers obtained valuable German research data on swept-wing designs. Consequently, the prototype underwent a transformation, incorporating a 25-degree sweep, a concept first tested on a modified Saab Safir, aptly named the Saab 201. On September 1, 1948, the Saab 29 prototype took to the skies for the first time. Despite its somewhat chubby appearance, characterized by a single central air intake, a bubble cockpit, and a slender swept-back wing, the J-29 proved fast and agile. In fact, it set the world speed record on a 500-kilometer or 310-mile closed circuit in 1954, reaching a staggering 977 kilometers per hour, about 607 miles per hour. However, it wasn't all rosy. A high crash rate marred the early service record of the J-29. This was primarily due to the inexperience of pilots with swept-winged aircraft and the absence of a two-seat, dual-control Tunin trainer variant. Consequently, 
Swedish fighter pilots had to undergo training using two-seat versions of the de Havilland Vampire, a straight-winged jet, before transitioning to solo flights in a Tunin. Tragically, this period saw the loss of 99 pilots during military training flights in Sweden. Nevertheless, the Tunin made history as the first Swedish jet aircraft to see combat action. In 1961, five J-29Bs were stationed in the Republic of Congo as part of a UN peacekeeping mission under the banner of the F-22 wing of the Swedish Air Force. This deployment was later reinforced with four more J-29Bs and two S-29C photo reconnaissance tunnins in 1962. Their missions primarily involved ground target attacks employing internal cannons and unguided rockets. Remarkably, despite facing significant ground fire, none of these aircraft were lost in action. The unanimous consensus among crews and foreign observers was that the Tunnin's capabilities were exceptional. Indeed, the Saab J-29 Gripen E hails from a nation with a storied history in the realm of fighter jets, and this heritage speaks volumes about its capabilities. While it may not perform feats that defy the laws of physics, one could argue that this jet was crafted ahead of its era. Today, it stands as a formidable contender in the global arena, taking on the established order of the modern age. Thanks for watching. While you're still here, check out another of our exciting videos by clicking on the link appearing on your screen. If you enjoyed this, you'll enjoy that one too. See you there.